Hey, it's Chronologically Gaming, the only channel that's perpetually retro because we're playing every video game in order of release. We'll catch up to modern games eventually, right? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to 1981. We last left off with Galactic Chase. As we play every video game, we couldn't find a definite release date for in alphabetical order. Let's press forward and see what our next game is. The next game we're playing is Galactic Empire for the Atari home computer. This one is uh, a game we played before on the Apple II called The Galactic Saga, or it was the trilogy uh, from The Galactic Saga, and this was the first uh, for them to port to the Atari home computer. Let's take a look at the box, starting with, yes, it, oh, okay, presented by Adventure International by Doug Carlston, and flip it over on the back, it looks like every other Adventure International box, they have their, uh, their design down pretty well, so you can see they have program parameters, the language is a hybrid language. I don't think we've ever seen that one. Average completion time is eight hours for this game. And age group is 14 to adult. So basically uh, pretty much near adult, teenager adult. And then you can see no special equipment. Is it real time? Yes. Well, sort of. We'll, you'll see when we get into it. And they have uh, a lot of lore about what the game is. This one is a very large game for the Apple II. For the Atari version, it's a little more slimmed down. It's a little bit easier. Well... It's a little bit uh, easier to digest. Any other artwork we have for Galactic Empire? Nope, nothing else there. And any other versions? We have the disc and the cassette version. So here we go. Let's pop in and play Galactic Empire. Released at some point in 1981 by Adventure International. All right, so we're, we're now on our Atari home computer. And uh, thanks to the comments and because of uh, messing around with different forms of emulation... I've learned uh, more about artifacting. And there's been a few games we played that uh, I've turned artifacting off to help me read text like this. But it turns out if you keep artifacting on, it allows for colors to come in. And the developers knew that. So there's a few games we played in the past that were all black and white. But all you have to do is turn on the artifacting or the way you would have seen it back then. And it, the game magically has color. It's pretty cool. For this game, though, there's there's no way we can turn. It won't, it won't matter. It's not using high res. Okay, so we want to start a new game, so push a number one. It's going to take 10 to 12 seconds to create the galaxy. We don't have time for that. Let's fast forward. Okay, there we go. We're in. So this is it. Galactic Empire is essentially the first of a trilogy that we saw first on the Apple II by Broderbund. And this is trying to take the same formula and convert it to the Atari home computer. The way this works is it's pretty much all done in this menu. Uh, you make decisions, and you're trying to conquer the galaxy uh, mining for resources, going to different planets, and you send out uh, scouts and other ships to go explore the galaxy. This is the main screen that you'll see throughout the whole the whole the whole game. It's it's a big strategy game, so you can see it's waiting for a command. We don't have the manual for the Atari home computer version, but they're giving us controls. Like for example, the over right here above my shoulder, we can hit A to attack. I don't think we have anybody to attack though. Computer central porting, attacking the Empire system. We because <laughs> we're in. Uh, we're in good person territory. We're in the Empire territory, and so the we, we just tried to attack them and lost. We, we lost a lot of uh, units, it looks like. So if we do it again, if I do C for computer, and then we can have different reports, we can see the galaxy map by pushing A. So there's our map. Everything white is Galactica. Anything blue is more than 10 light years away. Red is local stars. So you can see it's building the map, and this is um, a game we saw in the 70s building a large trade scaled strategy game uh, and, uh, and explore the kind of galaxy video game. Couldn't believe we saw this in the 70s. So here it is, 1981. They've ported it over to the Atari home computer. And this is the kind of game that you could play for a long time. Oh, here we go. We can use the arrow keys to direct the blip. No way. Does it use... Oh, it doesn't use joystick. I was hoping it did. Oh, man, my arrow keys are not working for this one. But that is a quick preview of a game you could play months and months now they did say eight hours on the back um that, that would be if you're just going to do one campaign quickly to go through the, the game but this is a game that you could play a very long time for if you enjoy menus you'd love galactic empire so back in uh, the 70s whenever we saw the original on the apple II by broderbund it was way ahead of its time had uh so much to offer now we're in 81 it's not really like one of the best games you could play it's uh, definitely above average, um, and it, it is uh, it, it is excellent for the genre and for the time period. So we're still going to give above average three and a half stars for Galactic Empire. And with that, let's press forward and see what our next game is. Valley 
All right, so this is Galactic Invasion for the Bally Astrocade. Yes. And if you missed it before, I want to show you guys this. This commercial is incredible. Sorry, or in television. Trying to sell this Arcade wall gives you four-player capability and, and, and an incredible 256 players. colors. Arcade has features the others don't. A built-in music synthesizer, three built-in games, a calculator, and Bally Basic. That's right, that's the what Arcade sold the console a back personal then. home computer. It's Arcade console, doesn't just computer, play games. So many, so many different Arcade. companies were trying to do that at the time. The make it into, is it a console? Is it a, is it a computer? Well, now you can have both the best of both worlds. Uh, it didn't pan out, though. Uh, Atari still is the king of this generation of the consoles. All right, so let's take a look at the artwork for Galactic Invasion. Alien ships come at your missile launcher from every direction. They peel off from the formation singly or in groups of two or three, twos or threes. The more aliens you destroy, the more of their reinforcements attack. Each ship is piloted by a highly skilled captain capable of maneuvering with incredible agility. Realistic sounds add intensity. Up to four players. No way. It can't be simultaneous though, right? But it's got to be Space Invaders clone or a uh, Galaxian clone. And there's the example of a cartridge. Yes, we're playing on the console. We got cartridges. And we have a manual. Nice. So Bally... Uh, manual for Galactic Invasion. Looks just like the front of the box. And then as we scroll down, <laughs> they've done this with the other Bally manuals. It's not super impressive. It looks like it's typed up with a typewriter. How do you load the game? You pop in the game. You connect the hand controllers by inserting controller one in the first jack. And, uh, oh, here we go. Into the first jack on the back left side. From, the, from left to right, the jacks connect to players one, two, four, and three. Then you insert the game cartridge label side up into the cartridge slot. Press it down firmly. And press reset, and the games will be displayed. This one has games that are already included, and then whatever game you have uh, popped in as a cartridge, then you can play that one. So Galactic Invasion, aim your missiles at the alien ships, score points for each hit. Excitement builds as they collide into or bomb after one another your bases. Oh yeah, it's got to be Galaxian. So how do you start the game? You choose press number one to choose the Galaxian game, and then which level, level of difficulty? Zero to nine. Easiest is zero. Alien ships destroy your base by crashing into it. As levels become more difficult, the action becomes faster. At level four, they, they start dropping bombs. And so they're adding uh, slight game modes, not really like the Atari kind of game modes we've seen. Sorry, Bally. You, you just don't have that Atari flair. Choose the number of bases you want. You can have up to nine. Each base will use your missile launch pad. And how many players? One to four. I got to see what that's like. I, I'm, I'm thinking it's alternating, but if they do multiple, four times, at, four people at once playing, that'd be, that'd be amazing. So the hand control for the Atari, or for the Bally Astrocade is a trigger that you use to shoot. And then the knob at the top is the uh, way you twist. Uh, but then the joystick is the analog joystick. It's this very uh, small one on the top. I don't know if you could see it in the commercial of the kids holding the hand controller. One of them was ready to shoot uh, the tr or fire, fire the trigger like they were shooting something. The object of the game is to reach the highest score possible. After you select the number of players, alien ships will immediately appear on the screen. You have to shoot them all down. If you manage to shoot down a complete set of ships, you'll hear a sound of another troop coming to battle because they just repeat the game like an arcade game. At the top of the screen, you see the player's number. How do you score? Does it say we're alternating in play? It doesn't look like it. Oh, it has strategies too. What's the strategy? The alien ships only drop bombs after their altitude is below the middle of the screen. So fire quickly and you'll get more points. And I believe that is it of the manual. All right, that's Galactic Invasion. Let's pop it and play some Bally Astrocade. At some point in 1981, this was released by Astrocade. And there we go. We start off with using the console itself. I push what game we want to play. So I'll push one for Galactic Invasion. What skill level? Let's start off with uh, three. And then how many bases we want? We'll say three. And I'm inputting all this on a keypad that's on the console. And then how many players we want? Um, but we only have one controller plugged in, so I'll do one for now. All right, so we're in. This is it. This is Galactic Invasion. Wow, ship's coming fast. But, uh, man, it plays really well. Smooth. I'm able to move quickly. At, well, I'm, I'm dying, but the the play control is really nice. For Bally Astrocade, it feels more like I'm playing something on the Atari uh, home computer than... Yeah, this is the best feeling arcade game we have played on the Bally Astrocade. This actually feels like I'm playing an arcade game. Man, where was this? What was the definite release for this? I wonder if this is something that came out in the holiday season. They didn't document very well. 
I mean, listen to the sound effects. It sounds like we're playing an arcade. It sounds like something that would annoy your mom. Turn it down. It sounds like an arcade in here. And uh, you are seeing the limits, though, of the sound uh, board, or not board, but you know the, the, the sound capabilities of the Valley Astrocade. As I fire, it's cutting off the sound effects. There's only so many channels they can display, uh, hear at once. See, every shot repeats it. So it's it's limited um, because it's the Valley Astrocade, but um, the way the ship moves and plays is awesome. And for uh, uh, playing Galaxian at home, this is very, very good. Console-wise, we've seen lots of different clones on the computer space. And there's some others that could beat this, definitely. But uh, as far as consoles go, this is awesome. Especially for Valley Astrocade. Game over. Oh, it goes back to the main screen. Okay, so this time, let's uh, plug in another controller. I want to see if it's two players at the same time. So we got to put this second joystick in. I'm going to turn... Plug our joystick in and reset. Yeah, I like the version of it. it. Looks really good. All right, so let's play two-player Galactic Invasion. So Galactic Invasion, what skill level? Let's crank it up. Let's go all the way. Level nine. And then how many bases do we want? Let's do seven bases. How many players? We'll go two. So is it simultaneous? It looks like no. So I'm playing as one player now, which means if we played a four-player game, you plug in four different controllers. Oh, there's our second. I wasn't even ready yet. That was the second player. You, you plug in four controllers. Everyone gets their own controller, but you alternate play. So wouldn't it be smarter to program it as, wow, that's amazing with the amount of shots they can do for the enemies. Yeah, wouldn't you uh, want to just pass the controller back and forth if you have four players? Or I guess not. I don't know. Wow, yeah, level nine is a real challenge. That's awesome, though. It's so much fun. There we go. Second player. So, yeah, you got to get um, them before the bombs drop because once the bombs drop, it's it's done. I'm, I'm playing two players at once for this one. For the console world, we haven't seen that many ports of Galaxian at home. So it's awesome to see this. We've seen so many different uh, titles on the computer. They have different names, of course, but uh, it's, it's still Galaxian, and the computer's done it really well. Whoa, yeah, this is... Level 9 is awesome. <laughs> you gotta be profesh. Oh, we're still going? Hey, at least they give you lots of lives. That's the number of bases, I believe. Yeah, we, we said how many we wanted. Game over. All right, so as a Galaxian, a uh, way you can play Galaxian at home, Galactic Invasion is it. Uh, for all the games we played up to this point, um, it is uh, not one of the best titles you could play of all the video games, but it is a very good game. Uh, we're we're going to go four stars for Galactic Invasion. Uh, definitely one of the best you could play on a console. So four stars uh, for Galactic Invasion. That's awesome. And with that, let's see what our next game is. Here we go, playing every single game. This is Galactic Quest for the Atari home computer. This one is by Crystalware. Let's take a look at the artwork for Crystalware's Galactic Quest in the Ziploc baggie. And then we have an advertisement flyer. It says Galactic Quest is an excellent combination of Star Trek and Space Trader. Battle the animated vegan fighters. Vegan? Vegan? <laughs> yes, the vegan fighters as you warp from galaxy to galaxy. At the same time, you may land and trade with hundreds of planets, super high-res graphics, and lots of sound. This is our most popular, this is one of our most popular games, is what they say here. Now, with this uh, title, I confess it does not work. This one is one of the rare games on the Atari home computer that uses uh, the operating system A, or OSA, which was their first operating system. It is very buggy. The majority of these games we've been playing have been using OSB, the, the newer version with less bugs. Some of the games that were made for OSA, like this one, needed the bugs to accomplish certain tasks, but sadly we cannot run this one, or I couldn't get this one to work. Um, so this is another game that we're going to have to uh, breeze by, and if anyone can help me play Ga Galactic Quest, I would love to. This is another game that uh, is out as meant to be a, a, a large uh, uh, galactic um, trading space uh, exploration kind of game. So it's, it's supposed to be very large. Uh, so for the time, I'm going to go ahead and give this one um, uh, slightly below average because we're not able to, to play it. And I'll gladly rank us up higher if we can get it to run. But not with an operating system A on the Atari home computer. All right, so that was Galactic Quest. 
let's move forward and see what our next game is. Another one. So this is the sequel. If you uh, saw the, uh, the uh, Galactic Saga trilogy on the Atari, this is the second game in the trilogy that they ported to the Atari home computer. So Galactic Trader is the second game. We just played the uh, other one earlier. Let's take a look at the box for Galactic Trader. So again, uh, by Doug Carlson, published by Adventure International. And, oh, okay, no box there. Any other artwork we have for Galactic Trader? No, not very much. The port apparently didn't have a lot of information. Uh, like, we're not, we don't have a manual for this one either. And this one, uh, the only one we can get to load is on cassette. So don't get to load on disc. Oh, that's true. There was a fourth part. It was a trilogy, and then they had the fourth. Uh, that, that, that's right. The fourth one is, yeah, like, <laughs> like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah, nice touch. Okay, so uh, this one we're going to be loading from cassette. Don't adjust your speakers. That's just the way it sounds when you load a cassette, I guess. And there we go. All right, so this is the second of the Galactic Saga ported to the Atari home computer, Galactic Trader. A monumental task for a game so large... Um, when we played it in the 70s, it's uh, it, it's very impressive. So originally, Douglas C. Carlson, way to go, Douglas, did the uh, the first one, and then the Atari conversions done by um, David H. Simmons. Way to go, David. Here we go. <laughs> Great. We love it when you pay attention. We get more information and uh, more more tips and tricks. All right, so right off the bat, this is um, going to be another, we're going to do a quick taste of it. It's not going to be a, 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 an extensive play because this is very, very complicated. So what we're going to do is push one to start a new game. What level of difficulty? Uh, we'll do one for easy. And then it's going to take, look at that, 25 to 40 seconds to set up the game. So let's we'll speed it up a little bit. And then we're in. So Galactic Trader looks and should look just like uh, Galactic Empire, the first one in the series. This one adds more um, uh, elements to the, to the game, and the whole tr the whole trilogy or all the parts of the Galactic Saga. If you ever play them, it's um, it's it's not where you need one to complete the other. It's just like each each game is incorporating different elements in it. A traitor approaches. Shall we admit him? Yes, let's admit him. Oh, you did play the Apple II versions. Those were so massive. Uh, we, back whenever we were doing it in the 70s in, uh, for, for the show, I, I couldn't uh, give it the due justice because usually we play a game, we can only play for about two minutes and we already understand most of the games in the 70s. But then we get to Galactic Saga and it's like uh, I'm playing uh, a, a game that I could play for months and I'm, I, it's, it's just very difficult to do a, uh, a quick dive in, in those kind of games like this one. Good morning, sir. What do you have to sell? So um, you can see the way it works. It's the same menu-based strategy game. Uh, you move around the the, the solar system, uh, making trades, mining for inf uh, mining for um, uh, resources, making money, and then exploring. And it, it's like a, uh, a a a a very early. Let's explore the galaxy and explore planets. Uh, it, it's it's by today's standards rudimentary, but in 1981, this still was really cool to to play. If you were into those kind of games. All right, that is Galactic Trader. Um, I'm going to do the same we did with Galactic uh, Empire. I'm going to go uh, just slightly above average, so three and a half stars. It is not your average game. It is good, but it's not like the original series. Um, uh, playing it from the 70s, we, we we bumped it way high. I believe it was five stars whenever it was at, when it first came out. So we'll do three and a half stars for Galactic Trader. All right, so that's two parts. Uh, so Galactic Empire and Galactic Trader. And now we need to know uh, where's the other ones in the series for the Atari home computer. Maybe not for 1981. All right, let's press forward and see what's next. We're now, all right, we're now in Japan. And Japan gets Galaxian, a home port released at some point in 1981. So this is, let me switch this out here. That beginning of the commercial is footage of Galaxian. So that's what you would have seen in, um, if you were to be playing it in Japan. Now, sadly, this is another one of those games that we, uh, I wasn't able to emulate or find. It's it's extremely rare and hard to even get to work. 
So if you look at the um, the gameplay on the commercial, that is the Galaxian gameplay. And then one of the big draws of the Epoch cassette vision was you were able to switch out the cartridges because before the Epoch, everything was the the, the like Pong clones, the same thing the ones we have here, the standalone Pong Pong clones. <laughs> yes, if that game was as late, if the Galactic Saga is as long as I know it as, it, that makes sense. All right, so this is for Galaxian, a game we cannot play. Um, we're still going to give it a rating because it is um, uh, graphics very similar to the Atari uh, tw uh, VCS. So I'm going to go ahead and say it's um, around uh, the average for the time because if you think of all the other games we played up to this point, it's it's kind of strange to think of Japan as behind. But at, at this point in 1981, the games that they're playing are not as good as the, what we have in North America. But man, oh man, is that going to change? So I'm going to go uh, two and a half stars for Galaxian. If we can play it or someone can help me play it, then it will be re-rated. But for now, we'll do uh, two and a half stars for Galaxian for the Epoch TV cassette vision. All right, so after going to Japan, let's see where, what's happening next. <laughs> no way. So this is the first release on the Bally Astrocade. Galaxian came out as Galaxian on the Ballet Astrocade, and most likely for legal reasons, they switched it to Galactic Invasion. So you can see with the gameplay footage here, it's the exact same game, uh, to my knowledge, uh, but it's it's just branded as Galaxian. I'd love to know how long this lasted, but it all happened in 1981. So at some point in 1981, Galaxian was uh, out on Ballet Astrocade, and then who knows how long before they was pulled from the shelves. So just to give you a quick tidbit, take a look at the artwork we have for this. So this is a, a I don't even know if it's real. It may be a reconstructed box of the of Galaxian for the Ballet Astrocade, but th this is one I found of it in a uh, like a bargain bin, just the the case itself, and that seems more realistic to, for for the game that didn't have a lot of um, uh, a time. There, there we go. There's another homebrew or like a, a handmade label for it called Galaxian. All right, so we'll rate it the same as we did before. This one is four stars for all of the games we played up to this point. It's the same as uh, Galactic Invasion, a very excellent game. Uh, whether you play it as Galaxian or Galactic Invasion, it's still an amazing Gal uh, Galaxian port that you could play at home. All right, so after Galaxian, two different Galaxians. Let's see what's next. Yes, we're now putting on the palm of our hand Galaxian 2. Not the sequel. It is a two-player handheld game. So take a look at the, the box we have for Galaxian 2. This is, uh, I believe, by Epoch. I don't see the information there. Oh, Intex. That's right. Okay, so at this time, Intex has their own handheld called the... Um, uh, I actually don't remember it right now. The... We already have the Milton Bradley Astro, uh, uh, Microvision that has the interchangeable cartridges, and then Intex has the, there we go, select a game. That's the other interchangeable cartridge system. So right now there's two handhelds that you could interchange cartridges out, and Intex is one of the companies that's doing them. So this is a standalone they put out called Galaxian 2, and there it is. You can play two players. I don't think it's the same time. I think it's still um, uh, alternating play. If it was two at the same time, that would be really cool, though. Maybe it's because you can control uh, the enemies at the top. So there's an example of the screenshot. And this is one of the other titles that when we try to boot it up, check out what happens. It gives us some of the elements of it, but it doesn't uh, work correctly if, it, if it's emulated. So you can see it's trying to uh, give us some of the um, graphics we'd see on the handheld, but it's not doing it correctly. It's just a bunch of garbled mess, basically. It's meant to uh, give us that um, uh, uh, the the violet the the, the VHF um, uh, playfield. It's, it's it's using the the phosphor display, but it uh, it's it's kind of doing that, but it's not just not able to do it correctly. So we're not able to officially play this one. So I included some uh, uh, gameplay footage over on the left side. Galaxian 2 is one of the best handhelds you can have if you wanted to play a shooter. Take a look at what's happening. On the screen, it's giving a star field that's moving in the background. You, you control the ship at the bottom, and then you move left and right to, sh to fire. And it's essentially a handheld Galaxian. And look how well it performs. It's not LCD like Game & Watch. 
So it's able to um, uh, have, a, have a display that glows, but it's it's the same tile uh, tile based or the character bases are all, all mapped on the backboard and then they light them up individually to give the feeling of movement and so forth. But it does a phenomenal job. So this is um, one of the best handhelds you could play at the time. All right, so what I'm going to do for this is, um, while we didn't hold it in the palm of our hand, it's it still is an excellent shooter. Uh, one of the best you could play. So I'm going to go four and a half stars for Galaxian 2. Of all the handhelds we played up to this point, it is amazing to see or play a handheld like this. Yeah, if they, if they did it, it wouldn't look the same. Yeah, and this one's much better. Okay, so that was Galaxian 2. Let's see what our next release is. We're just blazing through tons of Galaxian games. And here we go. This is the Exidy Sorcerer version of Galaxian. It's called Galaxians, or plural. The Galaxians version, I don't believe I got any, any legal trouble, probably because the computer just wasn't as popular. All right, we're, we're going to the Exidy Sorcerer. Released at some point in 1981, and this is Galaxians. We boot it up first, and again, don't adjust your audio. It is just the way it sounds, apparently, when you load cassette tape on the Exidy Sorcerer. We're going to skip fast forward through this. <laughs> we get some beautiful cassette loading sounds for Galaxian. And we're in. So this is Galaxians for the Exidy Sorcerer home computer. For controls, looks like it's... Uh, same thing we've seen before, space bar for fire and moving left and right, and that, that's our shoot. So let's go, dive it in. We're playing Galaxians with no sound, which is bizarre. We just had sound for the, the sound it takes to load the cassette, but then the game itself has no sound. The Exidy Sorcerer um, did have a sound, but it was internal speaker, just like the PC speaker on early IBM. So we should have something, but possibly the emulation didn't come through. Yeah, that's my guess. But um, as far as the way this game looks, uh, XD Sorcerer was a computer that had very high resolution for the time. Uh, it originally was out in uh, 79, and then uh, the, the computer we'd be playing on now would be the XD Sorcerer 2, the sequel. And it, it ended up picking up more steam in Australia than in, the nor in, in North America. And too bad, because XD was a very good arcade developer. And uh, this was their only foray, at least the Sorcerer, uh, into the computer world as far as I know. But another ex obscure computer. Oh my gosh, this guy's tough. <laughs> it is a black and white system, but you can see how high the resolution is compared to the um, other games we played at the time. It's a kind of it's another kind of, kind of game that you wouldn't expect to play, be playing games on. It's not me meant to be a gaming system. The only one of the reasons the Apple II is a gaming system is just because of the popularity. So many people had the Apple II that they wanted to make games on it. But as well as it plays and how smooth it is, it, it it is excellent. If you were that poor kid who didn't get an Apple II or a TRS-80 or a Coco or or any of the other, other computers we talked about, but you got the Exidy Sorcerer, this is the game. This would be amazing. Look at the um, frame rate in the explosions whenever uh, things blow up. It has this um, uh, really cool animation that they're doing that's, again, showing off the, the high resolution of the game. Yes, oh, the triumvirate. I've never heard it uh, told that way. I always called it the uh, the Trinity, <laughs> the Trinity of computers in 1977. All right, so that was Galaxians. That is actually uh, while we didn't have sound displayed and uh, it was it wasn't black and white. Still a very good game, very fun game for the time. Um, is it average? No. Uh, playing a Galaxian port is uh, still really novel and above average for the time. I'm going to go uh, three and a half stars for Galaxians. It's still very, very good. So uh, I'll, I'll give it uh, above average. There's Galaxians for the Exidy Sorcerer. Probably one of the best games we played on the Exidy Sorcerer. And with that, let's press forward and see what our next game is. Yes. All right. So from one space strategy game to another this is galaxy which we've played um did we play it on the no okay this is the, the the first time we have both the apple II and the commodore pet version so let's start with commodore pet taking a look at the box first there's the front of the box for galaxy 
another game by Microcomputer Games, published by Avalon Hill. And for back of the box, since we're playing on the Commodore Pet, this will be cassette tape. Fulfill your galactic destiny. Your scientists finally overcome the problems of traversing the enormous distances between stars. A fusion engine using interstellar hydrogen for fuel has been combined with the, the Kragar gravity wave technique for faster than light travel. Now you as fleet admiral of our newly commissioned starship Armada can fulfill the destiny of our race by spearheading our expansion to the stars. So it is a, another trope like the Galactic Saga had. Um, I actually was thinking that the, uh, the, the the series that the BBC Micro brought out with, um, uh, oh my gosh, I can't remember the name of the game. It's the one of the first wire-framed uh, Galactic, uh, uh, Galactic Conquest games. I thought that was the first. But we haven't even got to that point. We have uh, a Galactic Saga trilogy that came out in the 70s, and now we have Galaxy which is right up uh, microcomputer games uh, alley. And then anything else? Nope, nothing else as far as artwork goes. All right, let's pop it and play some Galaxy. Released at some point in 1981, and we're going to play this one on the Commodore Pet. Yes. <laughs> That is actually very impressive sound for the Commodore Pet. Um, if you look around the border, the, the border says it's the 2000 uh, or 2001 series. That was the first series of Commodore Pet, but there was many, many more versions of the model of, of system. Uh, at this point in 1981, you would be playing probably on 3000, uh, 3006 or higher. So whenever we do these um, uh, 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 quick uh, computer uh, um, uh, uh, like examples, the, the computer example is going to be whatever example is the the, the newest model. So uh, on the channel, we're not going to be hitting on, well, I'm, I'm now playing on uh, this IBM PC and now this IBM PC. No, we're just going to make it a, a blanket statement because we're really going to focus on the games uh, more. All right, so do you want to start a return to an old game or start a new one? Let's go new. <laughs> oh, the, your school pet has been put down. That's too bad. Yeah, 1981, um, I'm... I, I remember Apple IIs were very popular in North America, uh, in the uh, the South, for education purposes. You know, lots of uh, schools had them. But uh, I, I believe, was Commodore Pet one of the first ones that you had that was uh, in, in school? It's possible the Commodore Pet was the first one I ever played, but I was so young in kindergarten, I don't remember. I'd love to know what computer that was. Maybe at some point I'll, I'll, I'll be able to call the principal or find out, but... Uh, to this to this day, that is the only computer game, educational game that I I probably will never remember because I don't know what computer it was on. Oh yeah, into seventy nine Apple II, nice. Oh yeah, seventy eight, gotcha. Okay, how many? Wait a second, how many players? Twenty players for Galaxy? Whoa! All right, we'll just say two. Oh wait, two, two players. How many worlds do we want? Let's do uh, 40 worlds. Good night. All right, we'll do 10 worlds, I guess. And then how many years or turns in the game? Wow, you can do 100 turns to play a game. Well, we're obviously doing just a taste of the game. We'll just say 50 for now. Do you want neutral worlds to build defensive ships? No, no, I don't. What will this fleet admiral use for name? All right, so let's use the chat. L... Oh, we only have four characters. Okay, L C U R, and then last one was K C Club Kirby. Please wait while I create the universe. Oh, it created it pretty fast, actually. New setup. Sure, yes. Wait while I rearrange the stars. Oh, okay, so it's um rolling a different board or a different galaxy for us. So if you say yes, it's just gonna do a different star map. Rearranges it. Okay, so this is um, uh, another uh, galactic trading strategy game. So we'll just say uh, no. We'll say we'll use this one. So they're going to set up the game, and I'm going to guess it's a menu-based strategy game. Fleet Admiral KC from World. And you can see the world's A, B, C, D, E with uh, locations. Okay, it's, it's showing where everybody is. So we got two of the uh, two of the players on uh, world A and B, and then three computer players. Oh no, uh, four or five, because we said uh, 10 worlds. So they put all they put the Commodore pet or the computer on the other worlds. <laughs> yes, it's the universe as if it was imagined in 1981. 
So Fleet Admiral Casey from World B to World D. So he's going to try to take over. And then uh, you can see each human player, we got uh, L. Curtis and then KC have a number of ships in their arsenal or their, their fleet. And then it's going to say, uh, I'm moving one player, which is KC from World C or, or from World B to uh, another world to try to take over. And they're saying, how many ships do you want to bring? So let's say, let's bring uh, 50. Why isn't it responding to five zero? All right, so from world uh, B to E. And then... Oh, I see. Because it's a multiplayer game, it did type it in, but it, it's keeping it hidden. So only the... Like, if you were doing a hot seat game, only the person would know uh, what's happening. So essentially, in this game, you're moving from world to world, and you try to conquer um, more space gather more resources. It's um uh it's it's not as complicated as Galactic Saga. It's it's a, a, a even simpler version of that, but still a very complicated strategy game. All right, so that's a quick taste of Galaxy. Didn't want to get in too much depth uh for, for for these kind of games because you need a lot of time and you also need the manual which we don't have for this one. Uh, to understand uh, the rules of play, but uh, for the time, uh, I look ahead on these kind of games and, and see what, what people thought of them back then. Galaxy was a game actually reviewed in 1984 by uh, PC Magazine, and they just said it was okay. So uh, we'll, we'll say it's okay uh, for, 19, for 1981. We'll say two and a half stars for Galaxy. It's uh, slightly below average, considering the other games we played up to this point. But that's the Commodore Pet. How f does the Apple II fare for Galaxy? Do we get better graphics? Is it faster? It might just be a, this, a port of the, the game, but uh, let's take a look at the box for Galaxy. Same exact box. looks pretty much the same as the Commodore Pet. And then, oh, now we're playing on the five and a quarter floppy disk, not cassette disk. Same exact um, information that we had on the Commodore Pet. Yeah, it looks the same there. And then any other artwork we have for Galaxy? Looks like no. Nothing else there, so let's pop in and play Galaxy for the Apple II, released at some point in 1981 by Avalon Hill. Usually Avalon Hill uh, strikes me as the same as uh, SSI, like I just know we're going to get into something that is uh, very complex, uh, st strategic, board game based, maybe war, war game based. And uh, same thing with micro oh, or uh, Avalon Hill. Microcomputer Games, a division of Avalon Hill. Nice, they have an opening on the Apple II. Like a, uh, a uh, th those kind of openings, by the way, we're only seeing on computer games. And uh, nowadays, every, every game you play always has the company coming up. And all the way back in the early 80s, we have companies advertising before you play the game. Like it's a movie. Pretty cool, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> yeah, if you could play this with 20 people, this would be really fun to uh, take turns uh, and uh, use those turns to see who can amass more of the galaxy. 20 people, is, that's, it's amazing. Do you want to return to an old game or start a new one? We're starting a new one. How many players do you want? Again, 20 players for galaxy. Wow. Uh, we'll do again, just do one this time. How many worlds do you want? Oh man, lots of them. Uh, let's do 30. And then how many turns? <laughs> we'll just say 50, but we're not going to really play 50 years. Do you want the neutral worlds to build defensive ships? No. Fleet Admiral 1 will get bigger the game, controlling World A. So CHR controls World A. Please wait while I create the universe. Now, back in 1981, this would be really cool. If you knew what the computer was doing and how, uh, how much was happening behind the scenes... A video game that you're able to, uh, where a universe is creating and the computer is doing all the calculations for you. Because the people into this, these kinds of games were into like, risk or board games that were uh, meant to be played you know, over the weekend for a very long time. And then now you have a computer that's computing it all for you. We'll say, no, we want this setup. Please wait while I set up the game. So there it is. That's the star map. It makes perfect sense. More sense if you have the manual, obviously. But every one of these is a different kind of uh, star system, a planet, and then uh, you, you take your units. There we go. We have a lot more worlds because I said uh, more worlds. So uh, where do we want Admiral Chrono to go from world to a different place? 
And this is interesting because the other one said the pet was controlling the other ones. This one says zero is controlling it. So if I try to move from world A to world F, number of ships. Oh, it's still not displaying it. So uh, world A to world D. Number of ships. Uh, I want... Yeah, the number isn't working. So it, and again, it's just lost with need the manual to know all the commands to play Galaxy. All right, so let's quit out of that one. That was a quick taste of the latest strategy game that you could play on your Apple II. For all the games we played up to this point, it's still, I'll say, still two and a half stars. Um, so it's still around the average range, just slightly below average considering the other games we played so far. So that's Galaxy, both the Commodore Pet and the Apple II. Let's see where we're going and what we're playing next. We're just blazing through so many games this time. Oh, we have another handheld. All right, this is Galaxy 2. Check it out. The arcade can now be yours, right in your own home. Here comes Galaxy 2 with its magnification screen and space age sound effects. Imagine the destiny of the universe is in your hands. Can you knock out the attack force before they knock you out? Four different game actions, including an exciting docking maneuver. The joystick helps you achieve successful docking. If it's arcade action you're looking for, look for Galaxy 2, the home game of space warfare from Epoch. Yes. All from Epoch. All right, so Galaxy 2 is very similar to Galaxian 2 that we just played for the handheld. The difference is um, this one has a magnification screen and it's meant to be a tabletop handheld. This, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the very first tabletop handhelds. They got really popular in 1982 with Coleco's version of Frogger and Pac-Man and so forth. Uh, I think there's only one other uh, tabletop handheld, but this is one we can play. So I'm very excited to show everybody this handheld. Let's take a look at the box for Galaxy 2 by Epoch. Vivid automatic digital scoring, and you can score up to 10,000 points because it's 1981, and points is what really matters. <laughs> All right, so this is the back of the box. Oh, terrible picture. Can't really make out too much, but it's breaking up the patterns of how the enemies come down. And the features of the game. Uh, and then this is Astro Wars. Astro Wars is the name of uh, Galaxy 2 in the uh, in Europe. And then there's the example of yeah, the European version of Galaxy 2. The, the, the system itself of what you would see with the magnification over the top. It's blowing up the screen for us. Alright, here we go. Let's check it out. Playing some Galaxy 2 released at some point in 1981 by Epoch. The latest handheld. Yes. Tabletop handheld. Check it out. What do you do first with a handheld? Well, once you put it on the table, the first thing you do is you power it on. Let's flip that switch. It's got a boot up sequence. It's got an attract mode. I'm not even playing yet. So you can see I'm moving the joystick left and right, and I have my fire button, but uh, nothing's responding because it's just showing off the game. Now, uh, while this is an emulation of the handheld, the true handheld with the magnifying screen you saw in the, in the, the commercial, it's uh, meant to have a phosphorescent glow underneath. So it really isn't doing the handheld justice. It actually looks cooler than this. This just allows us to play it. All right, so from there, let's... Oh, what's select? Let's see what select does. Okay, it looks like difficulty. Oh, no way. So it's a handheld with different game modes. Now, the only time we've seen this on, uh, was on the Milton Bradley Microvision. It had video games that you could put in the palm of your hand that had different modes because the only other things we've seen up to this point have been <laughs> have been uh, Game & Watch. We had Game A and Game B, so it's two modes. But look at this. This one has four different game modes, and it looks like it's changing up the formula. So this is Game Mode 1, and let's push Start and play some Galaxy 2. Wow. First time we've had a song uh, on a handheld, too. Well, no, wait, I, that's giving Game & Watch less credit. We, we've heard little ditties on the Nintendo Game & Watch. So it's, it, it, we've, we've heard it's very similar on the Nintendo Game & Watch. So this one says you can score up to, what was that, 10,000 points? I don't even think they have enough numbers at the top for that. But I mean, look at this. We're playing Galaxian uh, at home in our hands. A handheld system. It is on a tabletop, but uh, this is one you could bring around anywhere to a friend's house. You could play it on the bus. 
You can play it um, at the uh, laundromat, just wherever you, wherever you can get the system, and you have enough batteries to put in. Then there you go. Nice. Yeah, so it's switching out the patterns of the enemies, and it looks like it's doing a, a bonus mode. Yeah, it's not doing where uh, it's a ton of enemies flying at me. They're like flying in different patterns, and I have to know or maybe memorize the pattern and then time my shot and get them. Too cool. Okay, let's look a different game mode. Uh, we're going to power it off and power it back on. <laughs> and then let's select game mode three. There we go. And go. We won't play all four game modes, but just so everyone has an idea of what it's like to play it. Oh, they got me. Okay, so this one has the same graphics that, that the Gal uh, Galaxian 2 had as the handheld, but uh, the different game modes uh, is, is very impressive, and the tabletop motif is really good, too. If only we could get that glow that the original had and, and uh, see it through the magnifying, because seeing it through the magnifying glass also adds adds to it. What you're seeing here is not as good. It's just the fact that we can play. It's awesome. Oh, yeah. So that's fun. That's Galaxy 2. Of all the handhelds we played to this point, Galaxy 2, I'm going to say five stars. This is the best handheld that you could play in 1981. We've had lots of other um, handhelds on the Intech Selecta game, and we've also had handhelds on Game Game and Watch, and we've also had. <laughs> oh yeah, it's pretty cool how it does that too, right? So you can see on the footage here. Oh, even the commercial really doesn't show it the best because it is uh, a, an older commercial. Um, but the way it looks is 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 very impressive for the time, and uh, not to fault Nintendo Game and Watch uh, handhelds, but this one's doing um, more game modes, and it's a a shooter that's a relatively new shooter, Galaxian, that you're able to play on a handheld. It's fantastic. All right, so this is the best handheld we played up to this point. Let's uh, see what we're playing next after that one. What will happen next? Oh, we're going to England. It's time to play the ZX81. This is Galaxy Warrior. Let's check it out, starting with the front of the box. Galaxy Warrior. Galaxy Warrior Star Trek. Maybe it was a combo pack. <laughs> Galaxy Warrior was one of them, and Star Trek was the other one. And yes, we got the full sleeve. These were all cassette ca cases, so whenever you unfold the whole cassette case, it gives you loading instructions. You can see over on the other side there. Of whenever you uh, plug this in, the the ZX81 didn't come with a cassette uh, tape. Uh, you could you, you could use any cassette tape and then plug it in with a, a cord provided by Sinclair. So you just uh, got got a cassette recorder, plugged it in. That's how you play the game. But it's explaining how to load it, connect the ear socket. Ooh, yeah. So you can hear, hear some sound, adjust the volume of the cassette recorder, press load, and then uh, and then they have the uh, other games that are available over on the other side there. And then, oh, then the back has, the object of the game is to navigate your starship, E, around the galaxy, destroying Klingons. Okay, our starship is E, and Klingons are K. So um, a, a little cattywonkered, but this is what you would see on the back of the box, which is instructions for how to play the game. And then there it is, a screenshot, so that's what we'll be uh, looking forward to on the ZX81. What other versions we got? Okay, just an alternate version. All right, let's plug in our cassette recorder to our ZX81 and play. This is Galaxy Warrior, released at some point in 1981 in England by Arctic Computing. All right, so we got our system. It's played. We're ready to go. But what do we got to do? We have to run. And new line. And we're in Galaxy Warrior, a game of skill, speed, and action. What's the controls? H rotate, fives uh, rotate, and then zero for fire. And if you're thinking that's so bizarre, take a look at the keyboard. Five, six, seven, and eight are the arrow keys. 
And this was the uh, like a membrane keyboard, uh, like of a calculator. So you're using those controls. Just imagine your hands on a, on a, a membrane keyboard like calculator, and that's how you're going to be controlling Galaxy Warrior. So how fast do we want this game to go? I want to try to go really fast. So let's see what happens if we do zero. Oh, do we want the Klingons to move? Let's make it really hard. So let's make it fast and say the Klingons move. Here we go. We're going to England, getting a rip off of Star Trek. You now have three ships to free the galaxy from Klingons. Press any key to start the game. All right, I'm ready. Let's do this. I'm in. All right, so I am E, which I... Oh, there we go. So I'm at the top of the screen now, it looks like, right? Yeah, so that's me moving. I can only move... I can only turn left and right. So I'm turning left and right, and then there's my fire. Yep, so I just shot. Whenever I shoot out, it stops the ship. So all movement stops. And the only controls I have is moving left, right, and then fire. And I'm supposed to get over to the K and shoot the Klingons. We rarely see action-type games on the ZX81, and here's why. You can see it's only text-based. Oh, there I am, the A. Okay, so when I'm going uh, when I'm going up, I'm an A. When I go to the left or right, uh, then I'm a, a, a cursor. Let's see if we can take these Klingons out. I was expecting like a, um, a, a galactic uh, trading uh, uh, and navigating game or exploring, but I was not expecting to move around and actually attack Klingons like an action game. Can I get one though? That's the question. Yeah, the whole screen pauses whenever I fire. <laughs> it is extremely clunky, especially when you think of, yes, we got one. We got a Klingon. What's my score? Okay, I got a score of 10. In 1981, that's not too shabby for the ZX81. <laughs> oh man, yeah, on a basic, yeah, they played like this, all text. It's quaint, and if this is all you had, uh, because if you if you think about it, in England before this, there was only computers made from kits that you built yourself. So if you had a, a full system like this, it's a very much, very much budget system. The ZX81. Um, wait, how do I go to another galaxy now? Do I go through the O? Is that my warp? <laughs> the star system just stopped for me. Oh, maybe it works. Yes. So we went to the next system, and here we go. Now we have four Cleons to kill. Whoa. All right. So imagine it's 1981. You have uh, a brand new ZX81, and then this is the game you got with it. Um, if you had nothing else, as far as computers go, um, I could expect, because uh, at this point, there's a, the, the arcades are very popular in England and in Europe, and uh, there is other uh, consoles that you can play in Europe. I'm thinking of, like, the Philips Video Pack. This would be considered uh, maybe... Uh, a few minutes of fun, but really not something that would engage you. So I'm going to go ahead and say, even still, because I know what else is out there in England, and because of everything else we've seen up to this point, Galaxy Warrior, I'm going to say it is a bad game because um, of how slowly it runs and moves and controls. Imagine your hands on a membrane-like calculator keyboard trying to move a ship around and fire. So I'm going to say... Uh, of all the games we played up to this point, it is a bad one. It's not like in the range of Broken, it works, but uh, we'll, we'll, I'm not going to even say one and a half stars because it's still playable and it's action-based. So it has some value of fun, but if you think of everything else, if um, uh, if, if you were a, a poor kid, you still would have had a, a home console uh, or, or had enjoyment from a home console before getting a ZX81. So I'm going to say two stars for Galaxy Warrior. Fun little tidbit of the video game industry. All right, and with that, let's see what our next game is. Oh, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Amber Pegasus. We're now going to New Zealand with a very obscure home computer that uh, I believe started from uh, in New Zealand, and then uh, I don't even know if it went anywhere else. But this is a combination of a game that's called Gal Galaxy Wars and Hangman. This is the very first time we're going to play a game from New Zealand. Let's take a look at the images, which I think all we have is, yes, we have just uh, the, the box that it came in. You can see the part to description and uh, the year, but uh, that's it. Yeah, that's all we got. <laughs> with some um, uh, homebrew artwork, but nothing official. This is extremely, extremely rare. Welcome to New Zealand. 
and we're going to play some Galaxy Wars and Hangman, our very first Amber Pegasus game. And there it is. It booted up. We're in. What do we want to play? Let's play Galaxy Wars. Sure. What's it about? Type one for easy, two for difficult, and the number of asteroids will do one. Number of torpedoes, one. Speed of the game, one. And then it, we're in. Okay, so the, the way this game works is, okay, it looks like the um, move, uh, the, the, first of all, check out the frame rate and t check a look at the flicker. It, it looks like the, the screen is refreshing itself almost every second uh, before it comes to the screen. Uh, maybe it's a little working a little bit too hard to display everything, but if we consider the uh, Exidy Sorcerer doing all black and white and high, higher res like this one, uh, the Amber Pegasus obviously is chugging a way to try to get it done. <laughs> I believe so, yes. Okay, so this one is um, the, a game we played before in the arcades where you're trying to aim a missile past all the asteroids and uh, work your way to the top and shoot the aliens that are uh, that are coming down. So I believe we can move left and right. And uh, controls are very bizarre. So I'm having to... There we go. There's there's left. There's right. And then we want to go uh, fire our missile up. Let's wait for it. And go. There it is. So you have to dodge everything and move to the top. The last time we saw this game was back in uh, the early 70s. Uh, we had an iteration in the arcades. And then we also saw this game for... <laughs> oh, wow, they already got me. We also saw this game for the RCA Studio 2. Uh, it didn't have the uh, the cool aliens at the top. It was just, you know, fire the missile. Once you get to the top, then uh, then you won. And then the, uh, the other game we, you play for the Pegasus is Hangman. Now, I wanted to show this just because we can, uh, but you can obviously tell from all the other computers we played up to this point, it is not as good as those. Uh, we're going to be playing games all over the world when they were released, and uh, the, the rating system is based on like a global scale of everything that you could play. Obviously, if this is all you got for your very first computer, it would be incredible. But we have the luxury of playing everything. So that was... Galaxy Wars and Hangman. There's an example, a screenshot of Hangman. You can see um, a pretty simple. Uh, it reminds me of, of games we played back in the 70s. And we're going to see that when we go to Russia to play video games. And we go to uh, Mexico and South America. So as we go to different places that have only a certain system. And this is what you love. I totally understand. We're going to be playing everything. So with all the games we have up to this point, this does have two games on it. Galaxy Wars and Hangman, but it is still not very good. So uh, with our first foray with the Pegasus, a very uh, rare home computer, we're going to say it is still in the range of bad. And I'm even going to go one and a half stars if we consider everything else we played up to this point for uh, for video games. So sorry, Pegasus. Sorry, New Zealand. But we're rating everything. Every single video game gets a shot on the channel. All right, and with that, we've reached the end of our evening, so we're going to put our video game playing on pause. Thank you so much for joining me. We're going to continue playing all the games we couldn't find the definite release date for in alphabetical order in 1981. And as you can see, we don't know where we're going to go, what games we're going to play, but it's going to be a blast. We'll catch you, we'll catch you next time. Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the channel and joining me on my quest to play every single video game in order of release. We'll be streaming live every weekday at 9pm Central, so join us and let us know if you miss any games along the way. This video would not be possible without RetroArch and LaunchBox. Please tell your friends there's some crazy guy out there trying to play every single video game. You can always check out Chronologically Gaming on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Chronologically Gaming is the name to look for. We will catch you next time.